Another welcome to this CUBE conversation here on Glorious Friday in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is with Howie Shu, CUBE Collective founding member, friend of theCUBE, entrepreneur, investor, all things AI. Howie, great to see you and congratulations on your new show. Uh, you've been a great CUBE Collective contributor and continue to be a great analyst of the team. We love working with you and you got your new show going on. Yes, I launched uh, Biting to Future on New York Stock Exchange. Unbelievable, <laughs> but I did that. Uh, all thanks to you and Dave for uh, the initial introduction. Well, we're ha happy to do it. Your content's amazing. You hosted a great panel, SuperCloud. Bite to the future, what's the premise of the show? What are you looking to do? Well, so you know that, right? And you know, I talk to a lot of the amazing founders all the time, you know, on the side or in, you know, on SuperCloud. I figured I wanted to do more and I wanted to make that more systematic. And also a lot of the founders, they love to have some more exposure, right? And then more important, you know, the community. Right, the people outside, yeah. they wanted to listen, right? Just like people, you know, wanted to hear how we, what we want to talk about it. They benefit from the knowledge, from the insights. So I think it's a kind of win-win-win, right? Yeah. You know, for, for, for the founders, for myself, and then for the community. And for the folks watching, the Cube Collective is our new approach where we have an open model. They don't work for the Cube, it's part of the community. Where we share our platform to bring more knowledge and connections. So you tap into the Cube network, New York Stock Exchange, you ring the bell, you're doing a show there, uh, you're doing a show here, we're promoting it, you got your own show. So it's really about open media, Howie, and I think you're a great example. I want to say thank you for being a pioneer and a trailblazer uh, with the Cube. And of course, there's a lot more, David Lithicum's part of it, we have a bunch of other folks in there. And you're going to see a lot more about the Cube Collective, which we can participate with us join the team, join the community, be part of the conversation and contribute and get take advantage of the resources of the Cube and all the, the Cube alumni and the network effect that goes with that. And yep. you bring yep. good content and it's just people love it. So thanks for contributing and uh, you got a great voice in AI. Obviously your technical chops are, are well documented in your career. But what's fascinating, we've talked off camera and I want to get into it now because this has been quite the AI week. Um, you got the a transition at AWS from uh, Adam Skleski to Matt Garman, showing that a product-led CEO is really going to be the key to success, uh, and that's going to be at Amazon. Adam Skleski was, was a phenomenal uh, sales and marketing CEO, ran the ship beautifully. OpenAI continues to thunder along and grow. They got new Especially announcements. Especially the thunder right the, the day before. <laughs> Thundering and taking the, trying to suck the oxygen out of the Google I.O. event, uh, where they had a huge AI, Gemini, and a bunch of advancements. Um, OpenAI accused of crawling YouTube. Sundar was on the record, I saw the CNBC article. Intel's got a new leader at the fab plant. Um, in this industry applications, you got ethical concerns, you got security, skills and training. It's really an explosive time in a good way for AI because everything's changing. And, and one of the things I want to talk to you about is, we were, Dave and I were talking on our cube pod, is that we're now seeing the lines start to form between the moment in time we're in now that will become a timeless moment. And that is a, a demarcation between old way and new way. And specifically, the classic stack. Physical infrastructure, middleware, application, just generically laying it out in the three layers. Everything will change. We're already seeing all the effort on the consumer side. GPUs being sucked up by Meta, Amazon, hyperscalers, Nvidia, Broadcom, selling chips to Dell. So a lot of infrastructure action right now. Core Weave just raised $7 billion in debt. Okay, GPU cloud. So you start to see, okay, the compute, supercomputer-like infrastructure is getting tooled up to rise up to the applications. GPU is the so, I mean, this is first just, class citizen. This right? is the beginning of, the, of a major wave. We're starting to see these lines where that's old, this is new. By the way, I didn't realize until I read something this morning, AMD market cap is twice as much as Intel. Can you believe that? I, you know. <laughs> old, <laughs> new. Yes. So again, what, so what are you seeing out there? Give us the current update from the trends you're seeing right now and the developments around Look, AI. this week, uh, you know, from my perspective, it's all about the announcement made by OpenAI and uh, Google, you know, from the Google I.O. Um, the, on the OpenAI side, they released the GPT-4.0 model, um, the virtual assistant, the personal assistant. Uh, the amazing thing part is that uh, you basically have the real time, you know, uh, pretty much real time back and forth. Uh, behind the scene, it's more than just a real time or not. There is a lot of fundamental thing in it. One is the uh, the multimodal, right? Multimodal before it's like a voice, you know, into the text, you know, do some reasoning, and then back to text. I mean, multiple steps. Any three steps, if not five or six steps. Uh, the problem with that is, you know, the latency, 
and each step has an error, you know, a sort of a propagate, right? Now it looks like they are able to do, you know, end-to-end -end multimodel. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's still some hard coding thing in it here and yeah. there, but it shows the trend, right? I was talking to one of the, uh, you know, w w one of the best research scientists about this topic uh, this week, right? You know, I asked him point blank, you know, wh wh where are we going from the large language model? Is that a, this end-to-end -end kind of the multimodel? Uh, moving forward, you know, I think he and I are on the same page. In the future, it's not going to be text, text, it's going to be anything. That anything could be video, audio, right, you know, going through the transformer model, and then on the other side, it's the byte. That byte could be audio, video, image, text. So I think that's where the world is moving towards. Um, we are not seeing that completely yet. I think the, the, the current end-to-end -end still, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of limitations, but I think that's where the future... And the key step is that it's multimodal in line. Native. Natively native. in the process, not invoking... No, no translation into from image to text, you know, you know, text to text sort of things. So I think that's very important, right? Scope the order of magnitude and why that's important. Give us, give us a, um, a reason why that's a big deal. Oh, then it would make the personal assistant possible. Before that, I like, okay, you ask something, uh, the latency will kill you, you're not going to use it, right? 30 seconds or 13 seconds, it's a lot too of- Too many steps. Yeah, too many steps, that's, that's one, that's the latency. And what people didn't realize is because too many steps, the error rate will, <laughs> will, will, will sort of the, uh, propagate. Exactly. So, 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 so that's why you see a lot of time, you know, it doesn't know what it, it's yeah. doing because of the multi-steps. Um, I think the, the single step, end-to-end, -end, the multi is a big deal. I think, uh, I, I know, well, I wouldn't say I know, you know, I anticipated that's coming, but I think it's actually, you know, arrive a little bit earlier. Uh, I, my expectation is it, for it to mature, it still takes some time, mm -hmm. but, you know, in the next two or three years. Yeah, it's interesting how Dave and I were talking about this in podcast way back when, we were comparing the web days to internet web days to here, and we compared dial-up speeds to the internet back in the day, people know dial-up. It just got faster and faster, and as more online users came on, we're seeing that now with, with OpenAI. This is that evolution. Reduce the steps, increase the speed to value. It's very interesting you use this analogy. So, you know, in the, in the recent past when people asked me about why we don't have the killer applications with the uh, gen, generative AI yet, right, I, I told them there's one analogy I, I also use this. You know, think about it. In the late 90s, you have dial-ups, right? You know, are you going to put a YouTube on it? Probably not. It sort of works, it, but, but yeah. it's... it's Graphics sort of were our challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you probably wouldn't, right? So there is a reason that uh, YouTube arrived around the 2002, 2003, because if it, you, it happened uh, two years earlier, everyone was on 56K yeah. modem, you know, you wouldn't like to... If two years later, you know, another YouTube would have, you know, done it, right? So, so it arrived at the right time. I, I do believe that in the last two years or a year and a half, you know, after chat GPT moment, when people said, hey, how come there's no, not enough killer applications? We are in that dial-up stage. Yeah, yeah. You know, with this yeah. uh, low latency, right, you know, fast speed, end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, multi-model, I, I see that, okay, we are getting to the real broadband, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> stage. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, I did a podcast and startup 20 years ago. This is the 20th year podcast. 20 years too early, as it turns out. <laughs> Timing's everything. You can hope to have the scenario, and this is what a talk I gave this morning on was to some enterprise uh, leaders, uh, and I want to get to your thoughts about enterprise versus consumer, and I said to them, and I said the following statement, we can debate it or you can agree or disagree, we can talk about it. In the web, the consumer was way ahead of enterprise by years, in some cases five plus years. Here in the enterprise, because of the power law and the LLMs that are more smaller, that's data driven, the enterprise is kind of catching up faster, so there's a little bit of a lag, I think consumer will drive it, but you're seeing the enterprise, to use the baseball metaphor, hit more singles, small ball, get on base, get little wins, where you got to hit home runs in the big leagues. You get to the large language models, you got to hit the big home runs. Look at Stability AI, they have challenges for cash. They might be sold. They did the Fusion app. So you have need the big money scale to hit the home run on the consumer and then the enterprise is catching up. It's just starting to see the value. So it's not like the enterprise will catch up to Gen AI. It's already kind of doing it. It might lag a little bit in scale and functionality, but still, those use cases are much different. It's the power law of the long tail. So do you, what, what's your reaction to that? Because enterprises have unique end-to-end -end workloads. They're not mainstream. They're very niche if you want to compare it to the consumer. What's your, what's your view on this? What's your um, analysis? I have a slightly different view, but I think uh, along the line of the consumer versus enterprise, I, here's how I think about it. 
I disagree that uh, in the uh, internet uh, age, consumer was ahead of enterprise. I would say it is also true that enterprise you know, went ahead first. Like you think about Cisco, you know, mm. the uh, some they had intranets. of the world. They right? had intranets. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is you, you saw the infrastructure yeah. build out. That's the enterprise side, right? And then you saw the, uh, the, the YouTube of the world. So, um, so I, I think that there is an analogy here that we are seeing the NVIDIA, um, the infrastructure build out before we see the consumer application build out. That's sort of how I see it. Well, I mean, I mean my debate, my answer to that would be <laughs> the web infrastructure, a lot of the enterprises actually invented it because they were part of the TCP IP movement. The HPs, the Cisco's, they had intranets. Websites were there, okay, got that. But Yahoo, the search engines, the consumer adoption of the web was very fast, which also translated into the enterprise. But things like enterprise search, web page, interactive, was a little bit slower. And what I, that's what I'm referring to. Now, what I say about Gen AI is, is that you're seeing the similar dynamic where you can't hit the home run. You can't build a search engine for the enterprise. Back, remember back in the 90s, enterprise search, how hard that was. You know, so, so. so there are two additional points I have. So yeah. I'll, I'll get to that search thing for a second. The, the, uh, if you look at uh, the energy, the volume of the investment, uh, the startup, you know, the energy, right? I would say uh, 12 years ago, it was 75% consumer and then 25% enterprise related, roughly true. I think in the last 12 years or so, what happened is uh, less and less the consumers, uh, you know, energy in consumer and the more and more energy is in, in enterprise. Uh, I do believe it's like a pen pendulum. Mm -hmm. I think a pendulum may swing on the other side, you know, next uh, five, 10 years. I think we, you know, we, we, we see, a, I think we are at all time low in terms of the energy in the consumer side. I would argue if you or anyone doing a startup, next uh, five, 10 years is actually you're on the rising tide, you know, you, you are on the rising tide for the consumer side. That's how I think about it. Even though I've been an enterprise guy for, you know, <laughs> you know many, many years, right? That's number one. And then number two, why we are not seeing quite a home run uh, for the consumer. I mean, frankly speaking, same thing with the enterprise, but you know, in terms of applications. I think Gen AI is a very good at doing automation at a pretty cheap uh, cost. So with that, we can enable a lot of the uh, long tail applications. Yeah. So long tail application is you know, finally feasible to be enabled. That's great. But on the other hand, a lot of the things we are seeing is a long tail. So that's part of the th reasons you are seeing a lot of interesting applications, but none of them are home run. Can some of them grow into home run? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now the long tail is where the action is at for the enterprise, because they have data. They have their own data and they could like do some rag. They, they can't hurt can't really hurt themselves if, they, if they're smart. And for enterprise, you have to start with a long tail, right? I mean, yeah. smaller things. I mean, you can't possibly have one system everyone start using. And, but for the consumer side, right? Because it's a long tail, the distribution cost is high. So it's, it's harder for them to grow into home run. But, you know, I think it gave another few years. All know. right, so let's get into the competition. You got um, Amazon has their AI. OpenAI had their big demo. Well, Amazon, I would argue Amazon doesn't have enough AI. That's why, you okay. know, there's a guard change let's, this week. <laughs> okay. Let's put a pin in that one, come back to that one. You mentioned OpenAI with the demo. Oh, the that's, night. that's a very impressive. Yeah, and by the way, it was, it was actually a real demo, not a canned demo. Canned demo, meaning it was engineered for the demo. They actually did a live demo of the software. Just a little nuanced point there. Uh, but then I would also argue the following. There's a difference between a few things. Doing a, doing a demo that's not live, but they do a live demo, that's, a, that's a good. But live demo, not just by themselves, but given to people like you and yeah. me, let's play around and then we don't say it sucks, that's a long distance. Yeah. And then once you have that, you need to get to a point where you can put a solution around it. That's a, a, you know, a long distance. And then from there, you need to get to a point where you can make profit out of that. So every step of the way, yeah. right? So I think what they demonstrated is a live demo, it works. Yep. But live demo by me and a you, not yet, right? It's, and ship, can, it's shipping right now. I go to chat GPT, it's open. Um, no, the, the, the not, 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 not the voice part, not the voice part. They, 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 are, shipping, they are shipping the 4.0 API, uh, which is a low latency, uh, low cost, the five, $5 per uh, million token. That one is shipping. Uh, but not the, 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 you, you cannot replicate the same demo yet. Yeah, well, I, I'll put, I just saw it on my thing. Welcome to, I maybe got the, the early version. Uh, but I haven't played around with it, so I don't know. 
Okay, so Google I.O. was done. So the demo of OpenAI was on the day before, which we know is a signaling thing. Hey, look at us, and before you evaluate them, but Google did over 100 announcements. So they are pedaling as fast as they can to get their AI up. And you're seeing movement, they have momentum. Google has momentum. And you're starting to see the Google Cloud team look a lot like, like a, they got their, their act together. There are a lot of ex-Amazonians on there, some Oracle folks. Microsoft folks, so they're bringing in some DNA from the classic enterprise, some talent. Their speed, their velocity is faster than What was before. your takeaway from Google I.O.? What was your, did you have a chance to review well, any announcements? Well, you know, the fact that there are 100 announcements, that alone may not be the best thing, right? You know, they need to consolidate, <laughs> but probably there are 100 people, they, none of them, they, you know, everyone wanted to be on the stage. That's a, that's a minor problem. Um, but I agree with you, right? You know, they are, the, the velocity is good. I think, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, the vision model, right? You know, they're able to see, you know, f you know, just use the phone and tell what's going on. That's very impressive. Yeah. If not because of the demo from OpenAI, um, the full model, the demo, live demo, a day earlier, people would say, wow, this is amazing, right? I think the, mo the, the most uh, uh, amazing part is, you know, hey, where's my glass? Well, it turned out that the, the camera saw the glass before, but it has it in the memory, and they say, oh, it's over there. So that's kind of a, to me, there's, you know. Where to leave my keys, what happened here? That's the, that, that's, that's the promise of what Google Glass wanted to do. Remember Google Glass? Yeah, yeah, you know, so yeah. Augmented reality, this is going to be a change, a user experience, big it's, time. It's, it's, it's going to be a big time, uh, but I still argue, right, you know. Live demo by Google is a very different from you know a demo that you and I would say yeah it works you know I think it, it, there's still some I think some the Verge or somebody was reporting that, that they were canned demos at Google they weren't mm. that that's what I'm saying right live demo is is still canned you know for for average people to use it and I still say it doesn't suck there is a long distance that's o what I'm trying to I say. think OpenAI had the not canned demo. Uh, it, or did they? It, there, are, there will be plenty of edge cases. I can yeah. guarantee you on that. Uh, all right. I'm not, by the way, all of these amazing demos, let, 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 let's not forget that. I think I was, I was really impressed. We're splitting hairs here. And we're splitting here. I think the more important thing is right now that AI has, has the vision, has the hearing, which is amazing, right? And the real-time hearing, real-time vision, and it can tell you what's going on in the world. I don't know. I think, you know, it will change the way we live and yeah. change the way we work. As, uh, as the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, the Cube, Cube Research, Cube Cloud, Cube AI, I lose sleep at night thinking, oh my God, my entire business could be replaced potentially. Gemini 1.5 Pro is now available on the side panel of, of, of Google Workspace. You got audio, what, what's YouTube going to do? I mean, media, I mean, the search changing. This is, a, this again, old, new. What was once the old way is changing to new. So there is a mass freak out I mean, I lose sleep mainly we've got to lose that much sleep. That's my point is metaphorically speaking. I think about it like, whoa, what's the right side of the street for all the businesses? On our business, we have a lot of data, a lot of media. I mean, AI is changing everything. Search and discover one of them. One of them is the death of journalism. I mean, do we even need journalists? Now, again, if, if it's a data market, journalists collect data. So I think the game will remain the same. The actors and the enablement will be disrupted. So this is a classic case of disruptive enablement. Not yeah. enablement, disruptive enablement, meaning something gets disrupted, but it'll enable a new thing. What is your, what's your vision? Of well, that? you know, as far as I can tell, um, the cube or the silicon angle is, you know, jumping on the wagon of the AI, generative AI for, for quite, a, quite a few months, right? Doing your own rag, yeah. doing your own generative AI solutions. You know, for and then for uh, and, uh, and there's some commercial solutions here and there, right? So I think that's the right thing to do. The, my take is a very simple, right? You know, humans are not going to be replaced by AI. Human is going to be replaced by human. You know, leveraging AI better than you. So, so if so, here's a premise. Again, we're investing in our community as you're the Cube Collective, hence why you're uh, working with us and we love working with you. But the, the premise of our Cube Collective is, if humans are involved together with AI a network effect or a neural network can be completely nutrient, have nutrients like value. So if you have people yeah. and machines working together, then you can almost back out and let the, the automation scale things like reporting, like what we're doing right now, what you're doing on your blog and what you're doing on your writing and your show. So, so if you can create an open network, that's still data. 
Data is the oil, the new oil. Uh, and data <laughs> is the key. You know, for We're the refinery, the cube is re the cube refinery. Look, uh, for the enterprise, you know, everyone knows already knows that uh, your data is your oil, right? You know, everyone, you know, is leveraging their data. On the consumer side, because of the privacy, because of all sorts of reasons, I, I, I don't see people leveraging the data enough yet, but you know, it's, it's happening, okay. it's going to happen. So um, we see this infrastructure being um, rebooted, which is great news, it's going fast. That's going to move very fast, in my opinion. The next layer up is going to be the data layer. That's the middle layer. That's going to get disrupted. Snowflake, what's after Snowflake and Databricks? Snowflake's looking to buy for a billion dollars a company. They're There's a reason that Snowflake has a new CEO, right? Yeah, again, another change. I call it the wartime conciliary, right? So like, like the godfather. So then you get the application. So as we look at that, I got to ask you a question because this comes up a lot. Forget AI privacy for a minute. Let's forget about responsible AI. How should people lean into the wave of innovation, disruptive enablement of AI and, and, um, in a responsible way? And I'll use the term grounded in reality. We hear that a lot at Google uh, and a lot of these tech companies. Ground your models, okay? Which means you know, somehow don't let them go wild which means from a training inference standpoint, that's, it's a technical term, but also ground in reality from a solution standpoint. What's your um, uh, take on this? Because that's kind of a pragmatic approach. And, and I think that's, an, that's where I'm seeing people leaning in and weighing in on things like, hey, I'm going to ground in reality, my reality or data, not try to just let the wild AI go. What's your, what's your reaction so to that? So two things, term? right? You know, if you look at a RAG, um, the retrieve augmented uh, gen, gen, uh, generation, the technology people have been using in the last uh, year or so, uh, grounding is a key part of that. So I very much agree with you. Grounding is being, you know, you do any copilot, you do any chatbot, grounding is an important layer, yes. On the other hand, I would also say grounding is extremely difficult. It's not as easy as what most people think. So, so here's the thing. Um, so there are 22 states in the United States right now already have AI law. Um, and then those AI laws are about, is about like, hey, if you are HR soft, you know, if, if you're HR, you use some uh, AI solution for recruiting purpose, or you, know, you wanted to avoid the bias, right? So you, you, that's the, what the AI laws are you know, roughly about. But guess what? How, I mean, how do you ground a, such a solution? What, what do you mean by, what, what, what is bias? I mean, bias itself is kind of a, is, is subjective, right? And then also we, we, we saw that, uh, you know, Elon Musk in black, you know, all those pictures. Yeah. Is, is that because, you know, Google didn't pay attention? You, can, you may argue Google paid too much attention on certain things and then paid, the, I mean, the, 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 the fine line is very hard to walk. What I'm trying to say is that grounding, you know, at a high level, it's easy and everyone's doing that. But when you get to you know, compliance, when you get to a certain level, grounding is not very easy. Responsible AI, you just use the word, right? But, but responsible AI, your definition of responsible may be slightly different from mine, and how do we converge? So it's not an easy thing. So, so grounding is not as easy as people are and, and, and it's all subject to interpretation. In, it's subject to interpretation. Yeah, and again, it's like, it's like, reminds me of the old school computer days when down, the, you go to the assembly level, you know, registers, core dumps, you have a compiler, runtime linking loader. You need a compiler for the compiler, you need AI for AI. I mean, we're in a world now where you, you have to start doing more, more work to make sure something's going to run. So, I mean, generative AI is a runtime concept. It's generating new things. There's no known program. Right. It's not the programmable static web. Right or dynamic pre program By the way, I wanted to add one thing, right? You know, people should appreciate a conversation like this more because before you know it, maybe in two years, maybe <laughs> in X years, there will be far more AI generated contents <laughs> than human generated content. Hey, hey good content. to see you in person. <laughs> yes, <now. laughs> yeah. So people should appreciate that this conversation far more, you know, you, you, uh, b before too long. Um, we do CUBE certified face-to-face -face conversation, Howie, great to see you here. And, and, and I wanted to add it, you know, I say finished the last week, you know, the, the innovation sandbox, number one place was uh, a, a deep fake uh, detection. So, so I say set a tone, right? You know, yeah. what's the future? AI generated contents, how to detect yeah. its AI generated content is a, is a big deal. So reality defender being the number one place, it's, it's yeah. very meaningful, it's a signal. I think, I think you hit a, a huge point there. That's going to be a big dynamic, face-to-face -face in person, reputation, quality, authenticity. Yeah. These are going to be new hallmark variables. It would be more important in the AI era than before. And that's going to be the pivot grounding thing. So, hey, face-to-face, -face, we'll, see, we'll see you at the next events. Uh, what's your next, what's your next events like? I'm going to be at uh, IBM Think 
next week, Dell Tech World. Snowflake, Snowflake and Databricks. Databricks. We're up yes. at Cube at both places. Yeah, Definitely yeah, yeah. have you back on. Howie, great to see you. Uh, to end the, end this segment of great Cube conversation with uh, one of our founding Cube Collective members, Howie Shu. And it's face-to-face -face authentic <laughs> one. <laughs> what, what are you going to do next? What's the next show going to be? What's the next interviews? Uh, who do you have lined up? I, I wanted to bring more, you know, entrepreneurs here yeah. and then to New York Stock Exchange, yeah. you know, uh, and then thanks for your support. Uh, we'll, we'll do more. Well, we're going to have the Cube here, the Silicon Valley Nerd Cube, and we're going to have the Silicon Valley, I mean, the New York City Cube on the Stock Exchange floor. That's the Business Tech Cube, Deep Tech. Deep Tech invades Stock Exchange. Which you were there, ring the bell. Well, we certainly do more. How is you here inside the Cube? I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a nice weekend, everyone.